Everyone Needs a Little Hero Chapter 17 Better Together For the rest of the day, Hero felt terrible about the incident with Ray and Sam. Hero didn't know Ray had come so close to being hurt by a human since he'd never said anything about it. On the other hand, it wasn't really something a borrower would want to talk about casually. Still, Hero hoped Ray would give him and Sam another chance. After Ray started talking with Sam, everything ran smoothly, as though nothing bad had happened. Distracted for the remaining part of the day, Hero decided to reduce his heroing work to help around the house for the rest of the day, and it was a good thing he did. The whole Rafters family seemed to have a persistent cough and was groggy for the rest of the day. At first, Hiro didn't think anything of it. Everyone got a cough from time to time. He had to eat his words the next morning, though. When he opened his eyes after a not-so-restful slumber, he felt like he was being brushed from the inside, and chills kept him shivering to the point where he had to fish out his winter poncho. What was more alarming was that he was the least sick of the whole family. Despite his burning desire to crawl back into bed, he had a job to do. Sam still needed help on his science project, and Watney needed a model to sketch for one of his art projects. So, leaving Callie, his oldest sister, to help tend to the family and the house, Hero left under the pretense that he was going to go find food that was good for someone who wasn't feeling well when he was actually going to find something to make his family feel better. He made his way through the rafters and beams, finding it difficult to balance on some of the wider beams, until he made it to the familiar trim piece above Sam's cabinet. The wood didn't even squeak when he pushed it open. Bright green, eyes groggy but alert, Hero slipped out on top of the cabinet and inched to the edge. Sam, his human friend, was at his desk working away on the surface of the volcano, making it look realistic for his project. A quick check for a closed door, and Hero felt safe enough to call out to his friend. Sam? He said, voice raspier than he thought it would be. Sam's head instinctually turned to the little trim piece, and a smile spread across his boyish face. Hey, Hero. He grinned as he wiped off his hands and jumped up onto his bed, hand outstretched for Hero to use rather than the small teen having to use his hooks and lines. Without hesitation, the borrower boy walked across the slightly dusty top of the wooden structure and stepped onto Sam's hand, dropping into a crouch instantly. Carefully, Sam knelt and ascended from his spot on the bed and walked back to his desk. How are you? he asked keeping his voice low so his parents wouldn't hear him speaking to the small, handheld boy. I'm... <clears throat> but Hero was interrupted from saying he was good when a fit of coughs ambushed his lungs. Whoa, muttered Sam. That doesn't sound good. Hero recovered from his coughing fit just in time for Sam to rest the pad of his finger on his forehead. And you feel warm. <coughs> I'm... <coughs> <laughs> I'm okay, Hero said reassuringly, though not quite feeling confident in his declaration. <coughs> it's, <clears throat> it's just a cough. Plus a fever. You need to rest and take it easy. Um, You might want some medicine, too. Mom always gives me this weird grape-tasting stuff when I get the shivers and a cough, said Sam. Hero smiled and chuckled lightly to himself, Sam noticing stared curiously at Hero, prompting a response. It's just... Uh, I'm glad you know this. Your offer basically proves the point I was trying to make to my friend when we were talking on our way here yesterday. <coughs> that it would be better, or a better world, if we could all live together and out in the open said Hiro, as he positioned himself more comfortably in Sam's hand. Hiro expected to hear Sam's agreement, 
moments after his conclusion, but Sam was quiet. The human boy looked concerned, as though something distracted him slightly about what Hiro said. Oh, yeah. Is he okay? Y your friend, I mean. He seemed really upset yesterday. I... Did I do something wrong? Asked Sam. Hiro shook his head and sighed, a little off-put that Sam didn't really answer his question. Still, it was sweet that Sam was worried about Ray. Yeah, he's okay. He had a bad memory of getting stuck when he was little, and it all came back to him when he fell on the volcano yesterday, stated Hiro. A pang of momentary guilt hit him for telling Sam something sensitive and, quite possibly, private about Ray. But he didn't want to lie, and did manage to omit the specifics. That's terrible. I hope he's doing better. I mean, I didn't mean to scare him. He was really upset when I pulled him out of the glue, muttered Sam, bashfully. Is that weird? No, I don't think it's weird to feel that way. I think Ray goes by a different set of rules than I do, stated Hero. But Sam shook his head. No, I mean being held. Is it weird? Do you no, want me to? Asked Sam, his hand tensing and relaxing a few times awkwardly under Hero. The borrower teen shook his head. No, it's not weird. I mean, it was a little at first, but, but it's nice. I kind of like it now, actually, smiled the aspiring Hero as he leaned against Sam's thumb to support his back. Sam smiled in response and flexed his fingers to better cup the small person in his hand. That's good to hear, Sam replied, relaxing with his friend's reassurance. After a few minutes of quiet between them, Hiro's question came back to the forefront of his mind. You didn't really say what you thought, pointed at the borrower routine, about living together out in the open. Do you think it's a bad idea? Or do you think it's a good one? Sam once again was quiet, much like how Ray had been quiet the day before, when Hiro had posed the same scenario. When Sam finally turned his eyes back to Hiro, the answer was apparent. I don't know. I mean, I think everyone has a different opinion, right? If you want to live out in the open, you should be able to. If you don't want to, then you shouldn't need to, stated Sam. Hiro stared quizzically at his human friend before sighing and slumping slightly in Sam's hand. You sound a bit like Ray. You don't think it's a good idea. But I don't understand why, muttered Hiro. Well, I mean, your friend seemed really freaked out, meaning he was scared. Wouldn't others feel the same? Didn't you ask me not to tell anyone about you? Was that because you were supposed to, or because you were scared? Asked Sam. He ruffled a pang in his chest. It was true that he was initially fearful of Sam, but trusted that Sam would treat him with respect once he showed him that he was intelligent. He was also afraid that other humans would be interested in hunting down his fellow borrowers if too many humans found out about them. Sam continued as the hero's thoughts quieted. I don't know. I think it would be nice, but not for everyone. I see. Well, I think it would be nice, muttered Hero, wishing the answer Sam gave him was different. There was another silence between the two of them before Hero's eyes lulled. He felt a sudden wave of exhaustion come over him. Sam readjusted his hand under the borrower boy before speaking again. Do you want to take a nap? I could put you in my hoodie pocket while I work. I'd let you use my hand, but I need to finish my project, said Sam. Hero, liking the idea of a warm, covered place to take a nap, nodded and let Sam place him into his hoodie pocket. The surrounding warmth and minor jostling of Sam's body when he worked was enough to put the young borrower boy to sleep. Hero wasn't sure how long he was asleep until he poked his head outside of Sam's pocket and glanced at the clock. He had been there for nearly three hours. Not good, he thought. He still needed to make Tawatni's place before the end of the day. 
He wriggled free and said his goodbyes to Sam, who, after Hiro asked politely, gave him some food to bring back home, as well as a tablet of something that he said would help them stop coughing, explaining that he just needed to mix a little into some flavored water and drink. Hiro, already feeling better, hurried back into the walls and made his way up to Watney's home. Thankfully, the artist was already there and had everything set up when Hiro arrived. I just want to say thanks again, Hiro. You're seriously a huge help, applauded Watney, as he quickly sketched the borrower's body. Watney had Hiro pose, belaying down a part of a shelf. Watney let Hiro take frequent breaks, and let him stay close to the desk, picking himself up every once in a while to get the pose just right. While the human artist sketched, Hiro asked Watney the same question he asked Sam about living together in the open. Watney, unlike Sam, thought it would be a better world. It would take some getting used to, however. Watney, like Hiro, believed that there were more kind people in the world who would accept living together with littles rather than being cruel to them. Reassured, Hiro continued to pose for his sketch until, finally, Watney was almost finished. Sure, he needed to touch up a few things here and there, but the overall concept was there. Hiro stared in complete amazement at his human friend's sketch, marveling at the details he threw in, such as the wrinkles on Hiro's shirt and the way his hook was just a tad bit bent on the end. Even though he didn't want to leave, Hiro knew he was gone way longer than he would have wanted to be. He apologized and promised he would be back soon, asking bashfully to see the final product when the time came. Hurrying home, Hiro couldn't help but think about his question like a competition. So far, he had a no, a maybe, and a yes. His vote technically didn't count, since he was asking everyone else what they thought. But the answers were so spread out, it was hard to tell how everyone felt about it. Surely Ashlyn would agree with him. And probably a few others thought the world would be better if they could all live together. It would make his heroing work so much easier. Supplies would be bountiful, and the community collaboration would be through the roof. Borrowers could easily help with recycling and finding use for things that humans might otherwise throw away and small hands could help with building certain projects and solving problems. Borrowers wouldn't get sick as often, and humans wouldn't be as forgetful and lose things in narrow places. Speaking of which, he concluded his thoughts, just as he remembered he needed to help his family get better. What kind of hero would he be if he couldn't help his family get better from some silly little cough? It wasn't until he got home that he realized this little cough was a lot more severe than he thought. Everyone was practically out of commission, even his oldest sister, who had one of the strongest spirits that he had ever encountered, was doubled over coughing. She would have scolded him for staying away so long if his haul, courtesy of Sam, weren't so good. He managed to slip some of the medicine Sam gave him into some lemonade his mom made and began passing it around to everyone who complained about an odd aftertaste. While Hiro began picking up the slack around the house that he had neglected while he was away for the morning, he noticed something. He noticed it on the way home, too. But it was more noticeable now, while he was bustling about their home. There was an odd, stale smell lingering in the air that smelled sour. Hiro wanted to know more but he would have to put that on the back burner for now. Right now, his family needed him. They needed a hero. And he was just the person for the job, even if it was just doing the laundry. <laughs>